Hello and welcome to another episode of Rio's How To. And this how to is how to improve your double spay cast. Now, if you're a beginner at double spay, you should watch our earlier video, How to Make a Double Spay Cast. This video is for somebody who's learned the double spay and just wants to get better. And if you're up in your casting game, you've got to up your gear game. And I'll show you why. You can break some very, very simple rules, some spay casting rules with a short headline. Right now on this rod, I've got a Scandi head. One of the earliest rules we talked about in spay casting is follow the train track. My track's down here. I can make a cast over there and it still goes out beautifully. That's because the head is short and it works. So if you're learning to be a better spay caster, you need to up your gear because with a long headline like I have here, if you make the same casting mistake, the line will fall in a miserable mess and fail miserably. So you know you've done something wrong. Right? You don't want a line that's gonna, you make a mistake and the cast still works. You wanna know when it's gone wrong. So for the purpose of this casting thing and what I teach with for my advanced casting students, this is our in-touch long head spay line. It's a long belly line that's got about a 66 foot head. So it really enforces the casting mistakes you make. So talking mistakes, let's see a little look at some of the things that you can do to make a better double spay. So now let's take a little look at a couple of the tips that will turn you from a, just an average double spay caster into a much better double spay caster. I'm not gonna run over the basics, right? If you haven't seen the earlier video, I recommend you go back and watch our how to make a double spay video first and get the basics under your belt. And once you've got the basics under your belt and you're able to land the line in the box and you're able to create a nice D loop and you're able to follow the train tracks, and you want to get to the next level, then come back to this video and get these two tips. And these are the base two tips I teach my students when I teach a, a, a caster who's got beyond the beginner's point. And really there's only two of them, and both of them relate to the D-loop. And the D-loop is very important because it's the load that makes your rod flex. And if your rod flexes, the rod does the work, and you don't. It's beautiful. So what are the two tips? And the first tip I would like you to focus on is what's called the XY axis. And really you want to imagine two axes, one coming down your knee straight down the river and the more important one coming from your knee going out away from you. And imagine that there's a one foot mark on each one of these, okay, going from you to say 15 feet out. And I'm going to just show you two things. One, see the fly line landed more than a rod length away from me. This is a 13 foot rod, so let's call it that landed on the mark 14. Here's the difference, number two, and the fly line landed three feet in front of me. So that's mark two, All right? So you see the difference? So you can land your line in a different spot on that first setup stroke. And that's the relevance of this thing. What is the point of that? Well, the closer you land the line to you, the more line you have here to turn into a D loop. And the bigger the D loop, the bigger the load, the better the cast. So the first tip really is focus on this X, Y axis. And with practice, instead of sweeping the rod across you, sweep the rod over your head and just practice landing that line as close to you as possible. Get a whole pile of slack here. That slack turns into a magnificent D loop. That's lots of load. So the cast will be far more efficient because of that load. So if you set it up right, you've got the potential to create a large D loop and that's all you've got to have is the potential. Now the second thing, well that's going to relate to this. Imagine I've got a bow and I have my bow now and I pull my bow right back like this. If I pull it directly back like this, I have all the bow flexed and ready to fire the arrow away from where I'm pulling. So let's say the target's the camera. Nobody is going to pull their bow out here and then try and fire it at the camera because the bow is going to spring it a different way. So what I want for a really powerful double spay cast is I want my D loop right behind me. And what you'll find is that with a basic D loop stroke on a double spay, you'll find that as your rod climbs from this position, the centrifugal force drifts your D loop off your shoulder as well as behind your shoulder. So I don't have the load fully behind my rod. It's a good load. It's not a great load. So a change you can make to become a really good double spay caster is something like this. I set up and instead of just sweeping around, I push out and then I kick straight back. And by kicking straight back, I have a much more tension in my D loop. And that 
really aligns the D-loop. That makes that bow and arrow, that pulls that line right back from the rod, gives you maximum tension, maximum load, and if you've set it up close to you on these early close marks, you have the best potential double spare you can have. There's the theory. Now let's take a quick peek at what it all looks like. I'll put the whole thing together and show you the difference. The first thing is I'm going to set up close to me and do a regular D-loop stroke. And what you'll notice is the D-loop does go behind me, but it also pushes off my shoulder and goes behind me and down river. So I don't have that direct load. Now here's the correct one. Stop, kick back. Look at that D-loop. Absolutely aggressive and fully loaded and straight to the target. So the potential of this car is wonderful. It's just got energy, it's dying to go out there. So in summary, to become a better double spade cast, you've got to change a couple of things. You've got to get it a little bit closer to you on this X, Y axis thing. And far more important than that, you've got to make sure that you change your D-loop stroke and to more of a V shape, kicking the D-loop behind you so you have far more power and a far better double spay. Let's just finish this whole thing off with one just nice, more advanced double spay. Set it up close, push out, kick back, D-loop loads, cast goes out, just a beautiful double spay. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you picked up the two nuggets there to take you from your beginner double spay caster to improve a slightly more advanced double spay caster. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Thanks very much for tuning in. If you like this episode, check the Rio website out and see the rest of our how-to videos. Many thanks for watching.